Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to Karen's Kitchen. And I'm doing a, a pumpkin cake. This cake has been done by Earlene. I saw it in my group, so I decided to make it because we have a potluck tomorrow, so I wanted to make a pumpkin cake for our potluck tomorrow. Um, I thought this would be, this, this being fall, it'd be a good, it would be a good, good time for it. And I just happen to have one can of pumpkin puree, so I'm going to um, make this. I'm going to put this down to let you, let you watch me make this as I'm doing it. I'll twist this down so you can see what's in my bowl. Oh, you are. You're so excited. Oh, good. Okay, in my bowl, I have three cups of all-purpose flour. Now, she said in her, in her thing, when I talked to her this morning, she had one cup of organic flour, sugar and one cup of uh, um, brown sugar. But that's an awful lot of sugar, so I'm going to cut it back to a half a bit, a half. But I'm going to put a half a cup of cane sugar in, and I'm going to put a half a cup of, of uh, the coconut palm sugar. Right now, I've got my cane sugar mixed, uh, measured out, so I'm going to put that in here. And then I'll get the half a cup of the coconut sugar measured out. And these things come in real handy because you just set them up for... for um... Welcome to everybody coming in, and thank you for for sharing this. Thank you for, oh, I'm going to make a little mess too. We always make messes, but thank you for coming in and sharing this out. And uh, this ought to be a real good cake. It's going to have to be in the oven a while, but that'll be fine. I mean, it's going to have to be in there almost an hour, but we can see what it looks like afterwards. And I'm not going to put anything on it until tomorrow. I'm going to put, uh, just before I, well, in the morning, I'm going to put some uh, whipped cream on it, make some um, vegan whipped cream with coconut milk, and I'm gonna put that in it. This in here. And then I'll just get, gather this here. If I can gather this and just just put that in there. It's a little bit more, but it doesn't really matter. I'm trying to clean this up a little bit. And then I'll... Oh, oh good, you're learning to cook healthy. That's what it takes, is cooking healthy. Okay, now I gotta find my, oh here's, and I had to write it down off of, because it was on Facebook, so I had to take it, um, Oh, he did. Oh, wonderful. Now, I'm going to put in um, two, te two teaspoons of non-aluminum baking soda. And uh, the reason for that is, is aluminum is not good for you. So this is organic. I bought this off of Amazon. And it is organic. I've also got non-aluminum baking powder off of Amazon as well. When, you, when I did a search, I asked for non-aluminum. So, so that's exactly what I've got. Because you don't want to put aluminum in your body. It's not good. You have to avoid that. So I'm going to, it says, I think it's two teaspoons. I want to make sure I get that right. Yeah, two teaspoons. And I'm not sure if this has baking powder in it. If it doesn't, I won't put that in there. But there. Uh, well, that can happen. Sometimes that Amazon is real good for, for giving you your money back if you don't get what you asked for. Because I had, I had something a while back that I, it was a, uh, care powder that I had ordered and it came, it never came. It was damaged. It was damaged, damaged on transit. So they gave me my money back. So I was able to go and order another one that way. Okay. And then we have to have one teaspoon of sea salt. And that's, and that's, I love sea salt. That's about the only, that's about the only salt that I use. And one teaspoon of coriander. And these are all good spices. I happen to dig these out before I come in here so I wouldn't be looking for them while I'm online. Because I don't have any semblance of order to all my spices. I just have them in my cupboard and I have to go through them each and every time I, I want to make a recipe to find what I'm looking for. Oh, yeah. What's the difference? All Well, <laughs> I think... Very big difference. The the pink is Himalayan. The regular salt you don't want. That's you don't want that regular salt. I'm going to put this away because I don't think this has baking powder in. I'll just close this up. And then let's see. A half a teaspoon of ground ginger. Okay. But you don't want to put a lot of ginger in here, so I have to change this to a half a teaspoon. But make sure I change it because I yeah, you can overpower it if you get too much.
and a half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Sorry about that. I'll just put this back. And here's my pumpkin pie spice and half a teaspoon of this. And I think that's about all the spices there are now. Okay, and then we have a cup of water, two-thirds cup of oil. I'll get the water measured out. Sure, get a cup of water. Don't want to get too much. <clears throat> Two thirds cup of boil. Okay. Oh, that seems like an awful lot of boil, but I will do what they say. Two thirds cup. All right. Well, measure this. A two thirds cup is down here, and I bring this right up here. Well, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to do that different. I'll get a different different measure for that because that's easier. It's easier to use this. Let's see, I I got to get my oil out. I'm sorry, I forgot to get my oil out. Let's go get it. Thought I had everything out, and then I forgot that. I want to make sure I got the third, not the fourth. Okay, this is a third, and we're going to put two-thirds of this in there. And where Earlene got this recipe, I don't know, but she happened to post it on my, on my vegan group. Oh! This here, Pampered Chef, because you got solids on one side. This is the solid side, and this is the, this is the measure side. Or this is the this is the liquid side and this is the solid side. Got them from from Pampered Chef. They are uh, they're the coolest ever. I really like them. And let's see. And one can of the of the pumpkin uh, organic pumpkin puree. I just happen to have one can left, so I'm going to put this in here. You want to make sure when you get the pumpkin that it's the puree, not the not the pumpkin pie mix. There is a difference. The pumpkin pie mix will not work. That's got everything in it. You want just the plain puree. And it must say puree on it. Because I know a lot of people make that mistake. And they'll grab they'll grab the uh, pumpkin uh, pie or pumpkin pie filling thinking they got the puree and they've got the wrong thing. Welcome to everybody coming in and thank you for sharing out. And then two teaspoons of lemon juice. Okay. And these measuring spoons also are from, are from Pampered Chef. Well, this is organic. That's that. Um, it's it called for organic, and that's what I have. Um, and the, most of your cans now are BPA free. That was a BPA free can. If that's what you're worrying about, it's BPA free. Um, so, I'm not worried about that in the least because it's BPA-free. All right. And it says a half a cup of carob chips, which are optional. But I think I'm going to put those in there because I have them out now, and I'll just put them in there. Um, I like I like carob chips, and I'll stick these in here. These are optional. You don't have to do that. But I'll just kind of spice it up a little bit. This all ready to go, and I just go ahead and I'm going to put it in a bunt pan when I'm done. I'm going to start this on low because I don't want to spit it all over the place. So you can get that, get that flour stirred around inside because you got to do that. You want to make sure you get all the mixed in here. Since I don't have a stand mixer, I have to do a little bit different. I think that's pretty 
color. You want to see the color? I've got to get my oven lit. I forgot to get my oven lit. So get, let, let me put my arms around here and get my oven, oven lit while I'm at it. Um, there. Okay, now I'll go, go and do this a little bit more. I forgot about that. Just have to wait for the oven to get lit but it won't take very long for 325 it doesn't take long at all <clears throat> welcome to everybody coming on and then for sharing this out bear with me these are hard to get off there i got it and i'm going to put it here i just got me a bunt pan you have to flour and grease your bunt pan on one side and then just spread it around so I can get it in here. <laughs> pumpkin rolls. I've never had pumpkin rolls. Wow, that sounds good. Anything with pumpkin I like. Welcome. I think you're, I see Valerie's in here or is that Anne? Whichever that is, welcome. Um, I have to get my oven lit. I forgot to light it ahead of time. So i am got to wait for it to get lit before I can put this in there. Um, this is going to be a, this is a pretty color. Of course, pumpkin we know is, is an orange color anyway. I'm just going to get that down off this side. So, this is going to be really good. Like I said, we're having a, we're having a, a, a fellowship meal tomorrow. I like to call them potlucks, fellowship meal, whatever you call it have to bring something I thought well this pumpkin cake I might as well take it make it and take it because uh, it's getting that time of year for pumpkin you know kind of making a mess on this dish but on the pump on the bunk pan but I'll clean it off I think I'll get my get a spatula here out of this Ready for spatulas. They really clean out your bowls good. About scrapes it right off the sides. Oh, make sure it's getting hot. Oh yeah, it's getting hot. I just said, I just didn't see the oven thing come on, so it's getting hot. Now we'll wait for that to to go in there, and I will talk to you before I, this goes in there. I'm trying to clean off this thing that so it looks so bad it won't burn it on top. Wash this off. Thank you for everybody coming in. Um, I'm just standing over here at the sink trying to clean my rag, rinse my rag out. So. I'm happy that I could I could come in here and um, um, pumpkin itself pumpkin puree is not harmful to dogs because my dog that just passed away in April she had a problem where she could not she could not defecate so the vet told me to take take a can of pumpkin and open it up and just give her about a teaspoon or something at a time to loosen her stool up well. To make a long story short, she ended up passing away anyway. But it did it did help for a little bit. Oh yeah, pumpkin is good for them. Yes, it is. It is really good for them. Um, oh, 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 thank you, thank you. Well, this we're having a church potluck tomorrow, so I thought I would make this for the church church fellowship meal because I need to take something, and this is easy, easy, simple to make. Um Oh, I'm glad you did too. And hi, welcome. I gotta wait for my oven to get lit before I put this in there. And that's gotta be in there 50 minutes. 
So I'll have to be on here a while, or or I, or I can end it, and then we, I can come back on and show you what it looks like. But if you've seen if you've seen what Earlene's was in my vegan group, you'll know that's exactly what it's going to look like. It's a very pretty cake, and I think she put the carob chips in hers too. But uh, I like the color of it. It's very pretty, and I know it's going to taste good. I mean, just by taste, just by you know doing this on the spoon, real good flavor. People are going to like it. Now my my son doesn't like chocolate. So last year at Thanksgiving, I made a carob pie, carob peanut butter pie. He wouldn't even eat it because he thinks it's chocolate. Um, oh, Tanya, wow, six years old. Oh, I have a four-year-old Pomeranian and a 10-year-old Pomeranian. The four-year-old, he's a little, he is a little um, Houdini. He gets out every once in a while. He has it for the last several days, but he will get out whenever he has the chance to do it. And I got him in April, on April 25th at the shelter because uh, he needed a home so bad. And I'm all for giving animals homes because he had been to two, two other homes before I got him. And they returned him because the first one had children that were rough with him, would pull his tail and stuff, and he started snapping at them. And the second one had a cat. He does not like cats. He hates cats. So they had a cat. And instead of telling the vet or and telling or telling the uh, um, shelter that the cat was a, an indoor cat, they may believe it was an outdoor cat. Well, he kept chasing that cat, and they had to bring him back. After about three days, they took him back. I happened to go in there the day they brought him back because there wasn't any dog in there, and I was getting ready to. Leave. I was just getting ready to leave the shelter, and then they brought him in, and I asked, inquired about him, and she said, "Well, he won't be available till the next day." And I asked her if I could come back and and take pictures of him. She said, sure. So I went back the next day when they opened up and uh, had taken pictures of him. Oh, yes, he does. In fact, he tries to play with her, but she wants nothing to do with it. She's beginning to now. They'll come up in my chair in the morning, and he, he'll start playing with her, and she'll start playing back with him. Hi, Ann. Good to see you. He and uh, She's never had anybody that's wanted to play with her before. All the other dogs didn't want to play with her. So, when, so she found one now that likes to play with her, and she doesn't really know what to make of it. She's 10 years old, so she isn't as playful as he is at four. But he wants to play with another dog, but he gets along fine with her. Just really great. I had to take her along in order, when I went to get him to make sure they did get along together. Because that's what you have to do. You have to make sure that they're compatible. I have to be there and make sure they're compatible with me and see if the dog will, will uh, if they'll mesh together. Um, yeah, they, yes, he did. He knew where he belonged. I mean, after after two times being uh, rejected and brought back, it took me a while to get him to take to me. Of course, any animal's not going to take to you right away when they don't know you. And he's four years old, but at the time I got him, he had never, ever been on a leash. He'd never been walked. He didn't know what a leash was. He didn't know what a harness was. So let me tell you, when I went to put him, put his harness and leash on him, it was a trial. It was a struggle to get him to put it on him because he did not like him. He thought they were evil. But once I get it on, got it on him and started walking him, it becomes second nature. Every day he waits for me to get his harness out. And he stands there and puts his little paws up like this and lets me put his harness on him. And then I get, get the harness on her and then I get both of, their, both of the leashes on and I walk. Um, he loves it. In fact, he would be very disappointed if I didn't walk him every day. <laughs> he loves his walks so much. They are, they, I mean, they're, they're uh, silly, silly dogs for sure. They love their walks, but they also like to stop every, every little bit they can. They stop too and find places to go into a bush, a tree, wherever they can find to go. That's exactly where they go. It's funny that dogs are that way, but, you know, i got to get my exercise. I want to keep my weight down to a manageable level. I don't want to get in too over out of hand so that's why I do what I need to do to to uh, keep myself slimmer you know I'm slim I'm, I've lost this weight and I don't want to put it back on again and so I'm doing everything I can to to keep my keep the weight off and it hasn't been e always easy I mean a person's gonna slip once in a while you know and you're gonna maybe um, eat something they shouldn't but then you you go back and realize later well I shouldn't have eaten that so I'm just gonna go ahead and and uh, chalk that one up and then do the better the next time. I have slipped back and forth a few times, but believe me, I don't do it intentionally. And I don't buy meat at all. I go past the meat counter, I go past the milk, I go past the cheese, I go past the eggs, and I don't buy any of it. Um, 
Well, I haven't got any cut off, but I didn't know if I would lose as much as I have. I started at 250 and I'm down to, to uh, the, yeah, I weighed myself yesterday. I was down to 194. Now, I don't know where I'm at today because I don't weigh myself every day. It fluctuates up and down. Um, but at least I've lost over 250 pounds, 256 pounds as a matter of fact. So it, it, or is 50, yeah, 56 pounds I've lost. It takes a while, but you've got to be um, persistent. You can't say, no, I'm not going to do this because I don't want to um, undo everything that I, I've accomplished so far. Because if I start eating the wrong things and going back to eating meat, um, yes, it is. It's much, much healthier. It is. But if I, if I go back to eating the way I used to eat, yeah, I'm going to undo everything I've done. And I don't want to do that. I Oh, thank you so much. I yeah, I'm glad it. Yeah, I'm I'm glad it's awesome too. Is, I'm gonna put this in the oven, even though it hasn't beeped at me, because it has to be in there about a, about an hour, so 55 minutes. So I'll just go ahead and put it in there. I think it should be ready anyway. Oh, wow! I, I timed that just right. Let me set the timer now. I'll set it for 55 minutes. Hold on. I'll be up. I'll be with you just a minute here. I'll get this thing set. It's got to be in there 50 to 55 minutes. I think I'll just go 55. That way I think it'll, um, pardon me being in the way, but. Uh, hi to those coming on and welcome. There we go. There I got it. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. I'll put this up now since I've got that in the oven. Um, I'll put it back down as soon as I take it out. But, well, thank you for coming in and sharing this out. I love making foods for different people. And like I said, Erlene had posted this on my vegan group. And I told her I wanted to try to make it. Um, it is, but it's only in 325, so that's probably why. I'm in, I live in, in Oregon right now. <laughs> Do I have a favorite food to make? <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Box it. Um, favorite food? I like by any kind of food. It's there's no certain favorite. Now some are some go quicker, some easier are easier to make than others. Though I say that some are a lot easier to make than others. But my favorite? Uh, well, I guess I could you could say my favorite so far, and uh, I might make them for tomorrow too. Is um, peanut butter, peanut butter carob fudge or chocolate fudge? I use carob carob chips. And uh, maple syrup, or, and peanut butter and maple syrup. Oh, you like the carob pie? A lot of people have liked my carob pie. It was to die for. It was really good. Um, I finished up the carob tofu pie. However, it was good. Don't get me wrong, but I liked the, the, the carob peanut butter pie the best. I liked it better than that. I'll set my hair stick on it. I like it. I like the carob peanut butter pie much better, you know. It's hard to get around having having tofu in a pie, you know. And having tofu in a lot of things is kind of hard to get used to, but I, I, I'm getting used to it. But if you make your own foods, at least... Um, um, not, a, not a web page per se. I have a vegan group that I started on Facebook and I have 200 and I think 56 members in it right now um, and it's called Karen's Vegan Heaven and what that basically is for is for anybody that joins that, that wants to make vegan recipes to go ahead and post the recipe post a picture of it that's what I do all the time now I will not post this one in there because it's already there Erlene she's not on here right now but my friend that always comes in here. She made it first and she posted it in there already. So I don't need to post this again. I got my regular my regular Facebook page. It's not that's just my regular feed that I'll post it on there. And may and maybe post it a couple other places. But I won't post it in my vegan group because it's already there. So I don't need to po post it twice. But that's the what the group is for is for pe people that want to cook vegan, want to eat vegan and is a lot healthier and we post the recipes and you post a picture of the of the finished product. Now, I have had some, um, oh, you're still learning. Wonderful. You're a new vegan still learning. Well, wonderful. You've come to the right place. Oh, you look at, oh, good, good. Because I get people asking to join all, uh, 
it seems like every day I have people are asking to join the group. I had somebody this morning that wanted to join the group. However, not everybody that joins will, will make recipes. Some do and some don't. I've had a few people post, but a lot of people would just rather uh, go in the group and get the recipes that people make and make them for themselves, which is fine. But I've also had people <clears throat> posting things in the group that were, were not related to food. And I'm here to tell you that if anybody joins my group and you post something in there that is not food related, if it's not a recipe or <coughs> a picture of any, any food, I will, I will delete it because I've had people posting things in there that don't belong in, in my vegan group. It's hard to get people to understand that's what it's for. It's for people that are making vegan foods because vegan is the healthy way to go. Um, it is for everybody, but unfortunately, not everybody wants to become vegan. I don't force my uh, vegan lifestyle on anybody. If they choose to become vegan, that's great. But I'm not going to force anybody to become vegan because they'd have to choose that on their own. They ought to know what they like and what they don't like. I've tried to get my son to become vegan, but he likes his cheese. And they raise chickens because she makes uh, cakes. She's, she makes cakes on, as a side business because she's the secretary at the Christian school, our Adventist school. She makes cakes as a side business for uh, weddings and birthdays and anniversaries, and she sells them. And so she, they, they have chickens that they, um, ra they raise, that they get eggs from, so she make, she make her cakes. But she doesn't need to use eggs. She can use chia uh, seeds or she can use uh, flax meal. Um, um, you know something? You can get vegan cheese or you can make your own. I made a cheese sauce a while back that I posted in Facebook that it's made with carrots and potatoes. And it's got other ingredients in it as well. And I put it in my food processor. And it's a real good cheese sauce. It go, I put it in my broccoli cheese soup. I put it on my macaroni. It's very good cheese sauce. Um, yes, vegan cheese. Now, one particular cheese that I buy uh, at Walmart is called chow cheese. It's a Greek cheese. Oh, they're slices. They're not very cheap, mind you. I use them for uh, grilled cheese sandwiches. It's real good for grilled cheese sandwiches. They're not real real cheap, but it is good cheese nonetheless. I try to, you know, make my own cheese. The cheese that you buy in the store, the dairy cheese, has got all kinds of stuff in it. You don't want that stuff. It's got chemicals in it. It's all processed. Um, yeah, it is. It is expensive. Yeah, it is, but it's very good. But like I said, anything processed you want to stay away from it because processed is not good. They put way too many chemicals in processed foods, way too many. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to put, put uh, uh, chemicals in your body because you look at the ingredients on your containers. Those ingredients are, are, are ingredients that you can't pronounce half of them, or at least I can't. Most of them I can't because they've got maybe 12, 13 letters in the word and I'm sitting there trying to pronounce it. Um, no, not necessarily. Um, pasta shouldn't have a lot of ingredients. Some of it can be processed, but um, I buy pasta. I buy macaroni. You know, I still buy it. But, um, oh, garden fish cakes. Well, we don't eat fish. As a Seventh-day Adventist, we don't eat anything with a face. So, and I've had to learn to adjust to not eating meat anymore. It wasn't easy at first, but the longer I've gone on without eating meat, the easier it has become just to walk away from it. You'll find a, oh, it's vegan fish? Okay, okay, gotcha. People, a lot of people have not given up their their, their uh, fish yet, or meat, any kind of meat, whether it's fish, pork, which you shouldn't have in the first place, beef or chicken. They say, well, they don't get their protein unless they have their meat. You don't need to eat fish and all that to have protein. You got protein in your fruits and vegetables. And, you know, people like to say, well, you vegans, you don't eat meat, so how can you be healthy? Well, look at me. I mean, I don't eat meat, and, and I'm healthier than, than most people that eat meat. Um, and I'm glad that I, oh, there's another bot. Getting a lot of these bots today. I think they're, they're rampant. Okay. Um, but it, a lot of it is, is um, like I said, most of the foods that you buy in the store are processed. you got to be very, very careful. You know, I buy eggless noodles when I buy when I go to the store there's a spe there's a special noodle at, at the store 
that is egg, it says eggless right on the package. And uh, that's what I buy when I, when I buy noodles because I don't eat eggs. And I think, well, that's good. You know, eggless noodles, I'm not getting the egg. Hi, Jonathan, good to see you, welcome. I'm not getting the eggs. You know, you don't wanna eat that kind of stuff. You know, I was so um, into eating a lot of meat, eating until, until I'm doing just fine. How are you doing? Um, I, I always ate a lot of meat. I ate a lot of cheese. And boy, I'll tell you, <laughs> to give it up was very, very hard because I wasn't sure that I could do it. But you know, the good Lord has helped me get it, give it up because I couldn't do it without his help. I certainly couldn't. Not at all. I, I certainly couldn't. It's just not something I could have done on my, on my own. You have to be persistent. You have to tell yourself that you can do it. Um, no, not much. Um, <laughs> cancer can love sugar, let me tell you. It, lo they, it loves sugar. I don't eat a lot of sugar. Once in a while, I'll get a, a sugary snack or something, but I try to avoid eating as much sugar as I can because it's not good for you. You know, it's like Leslie said, um, <laughs> sugar will breed cancer. You want to eat stuff that cancer hates. But no, no, as far as sugar, no, I don't eat a lot of sugar. I try not, I try to avoid it. This is a, this is going to be one, one thing that I, ha that I will probably eat tomorrow at the potluck that, you know, they do fix desserts there. However, a lot of the desserts I won't touch, especially if they've got the wrong things in them. I won't touch them, you know, um, so, and I leave them alone. Um, yes, I did. Yes, I did. I put um, a half a cup of cane sugar and I put a half a cup of coconut palm sugar because it, it called for two cups of sugar, but my, my friend that made this before, she said, no, just use a half a cup because a cup of sugar is plenty for any, any cake. So I put a half a cup of cane sugar and a half a cup of coconut palm sugar. But those are, are better sugars for eating refined sugar. You do not, do not want to put refined sugar in there. This cake wouldn't be good unless you put a little sugar in it because the pumpkin is not sweet. So you have to have a little sweetness to it. But you got to be careful, you know, just eat it sparingly. Plus it's going to be taking the potluck and it's going to be, um, hi, be ready, good to see you. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Um, I try to limit my sugar intake as much as I... Uh, you miss it again? <laughs> well, I, it's in the oven right now, and you'll just have to watch the replay um, as to how I made it. It's in the oven, and I'll, and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. It has to be in there 55 minutes, so it's got time. But anyway, um, I love coming in here and making things. I'm only making this because my friend from Michigan, she's not in here right now. She's at a park with her son, but she made it and put it, posted it up in my vegan, my Facebook group. And I, and I saw the recipe, and I says, oh, I want to make this. And uh, like I said, I don't know where she got the recipe from, but it looked really good. And it's made with a, and it's put into a bunt cake pan. So I had to go buy me a special bunt cake pan for it. And what I plan on doing tomorrow, I can't do it today because I didn't have it ready, is it says you can top it with a glaze or vegan um, whipped cream. Now, I have the coconut cream that you put in the refrigerator and your or the fat of the coconut milk that you put in the refrigerator and let it, uh, um, you know, separate from the liquid. And then you just take that and you whip it up into, into a whipped cream. I've got the whipped cream maker. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow morning. And then I'm going to spread whipped cream on it. And, and that, it'll be good just the way that it is because I don't want to get put frosting on it. Have you ever had those frostings in the store? They are so sugary. They're sugary, not to mention they've got a lot of chemicals in them. So you got to make your own frosting. It's best to make like Cool Whip or make your own frosting. And I've had Cool Whip on stuff too, but Cool Whip, you look at that. There again, it's got stuff in it you shouldn't have. You know, and the manufacturers don't care. They put the stuff in there thinking that people aren't going to pay much attention anyway. So they'll put it in there and people will eat it. Put it in their grocery cart and eat it, not thinking anything of it. I don't want to do that. I don't put stuff in my grocery cart that's not good for me. So I watch my what I take and put in my cart very seriously. I always look at the ingredients because if you don't look at the ingredients, you're going to find something that's got the things in there you don't want. Um, no, they don't. So I'm saying they don't read labels. I read the labels every time, every time I go to buy something in the store because I want to make sure 
that that hasn't got a lot of chemicals in it. Now, however, a lot of the stuff that you buy is going to have, it may have organic, a lot of organic things in it. That's fine, you know, a long list of, of things. But you know what they are? If it's got organic tomatoes in it or organic, you know, onions or whatever, you know, if it's got stuff in it that's organic, that's fine. But just plain chemicals, you know, and anything with um, high fructose corn syrup, avoid it like the plague. You don't want anything with high fructose corn syrup. They're starting to get a little bit better on making foods now that don't have high fructose corn syrup in them because I've noticed that. Some of the breads I buy don't have high fructose corn syrup. They leave it out because you don't want that. You don't want anything with that in there. You know, it's not healthy. So you have to look at your labels, read your labels. And even if people around you don't read the labels, they just throw them in their cart, which they do. They just throw them right in their cart. Don't read the labels. Don't worry about it. Just read the labels because you know what you're getting when you read the labels. And if it's got too much in it, I just put it right back. I don't want anything that's got a lot of chemicals in it. Now, if it's just got a few few ingredients in it, four or five, like it's maybe got salt in it or a little bit of oil or something, I'll get it. You know, like potato chips. Sometimes they got salt and a little bit of oil in it, and that's all they got in them. But some of these things are, oh my goodness, the chemicals are absolutely horrible. Um, yeah, well, I have. I've made my own bread. I made a zucchini bread a while back. Now, I did scope it, and it's on my vegan, I think it's on my, my vegan uh, Facebook page, but I did make, make a zucchini bread. Yes, I have made my own bread. I don't take a lot of time making it because it takes, it. <laughs> last week I think it was, I think it was, let me think, I think it was last week or the week before, I made a banana bread on here. Um, it didn't, it didn't come out like I thought, so it didn't taste very good, but it looked good, but it just didn't come out the way it should have, so I had to pitch it. But so sometimes that happens. Things don't come out the way they should or the, the way they're supposed to. But, you know, you learn from, from your mistakes. You know, it's a lot of trial and error when you first make something. Um, no, I have non-alcohol vanilla, plus I made my own. I took vanilla beans a while back, which I periscoped it. Um, no, it isn't. I took my, I took vanilla beans, I took, bought, made two, uh, some vanilla extract with vanilla beans a while back, and I periscoped that, and it's my own vanilla. But the, what I mostly do is use the non-alcohol, which you can buy through Amazon. Um, what is it? Okay, I'll get it out and I'll show it to you. <clears throat> This is the one that I use. Yeah, I get this through Amazon. Um, it's the non-vanilla, or non-alcoholic, excuse me. And it's from Frontier. It's non-GMO and it's organic. This is what I use. If you want to, you can take a screenshot of it to, to uh, help you get it. Because I get this through Amazon. But all I have to do is when I go out on Amazon, is just type in the search bar, non-alcoholic vanilla. And that popped right up. Cause I buy this quite a bit, quite often. This is a brand new bottle, so I don't need some right for right now. But when it gets down real low, um, you're welcome. When it gets down real, real low, then I'll go buy some more again. But I, a lot of things I buy through Amazon. They're, they're a nice company to, to buy things from. I love Amazon. <clears throat> I buy so much from them. Um, sure, their prices are high on some of their stuff, but it's real good nonetheless. Real good. Um, I suggest that, that everybody take take um, the ingredients you see uh, of things you see in the store and decide for yourself. Now, should I be putting these in my body or should I not? Pretty much, if you see a lot of chemicals in it, don't put it in your body because they're harmful. The manufacturers don't care; they're out to make money. So, therefore, they'll put them in there thinking, "Well, nobody's going to look at these ingredients anyway, so I'm safe." And that's unfortunate. The people don't look at the ingredients. Um, um, I don't, I come on her, her periscopes when, um, during the day, if she comes on during the day or at night when I'm up, um, I go into her, I don't go into her, her early morning periscopes Monday through Friday because she is three hours ahead of me and I'm still asleep. So she comes out at 3.15 my time. So I'm not in those. But if she comes on like say Friday night 
or she comes on Sunday night or Sunday afternoon, I go into those, yes. Yes, I'm on the West Coast. I'm in Oregon. And she lives in the coast of Georgia. So they're three hours ahead. You know, she's on she's on Eastern time. So I don't come in there. Now, there have been a few times when I was awake because I had to let my dogs out and I hadn't fallen back to sleep. And I, I get the whistle, the notification that she's on. I'll go in there and I'll watch it then. But normally, no. I'm not up. I'm not awake. And I, and I don't know that she's been on until I... I wake up and look on my phone that the notification is there. Because, I, I mean, I sleep so sound now that I don't even hear it. <laughs> don't even hear the hear it, come, hear it go off at all. <sighs> these bots are horrible. You could report some of these bots if you need to because they are horrible today. You see, a, uh, you see them repeating, you know they're bots. They're, I bet I've had to report a lot of bots lately in other people's periscopes. I don't know why they... Periscope needs to clean those things up. There's their their way to and and I have to go into my periscope every day. And if I see people that have been watching my replays, I have to make sure that they're not bots. Because every bot every bot that comes in there and starts following me, I block them. I would I would be loaded with bots in this periscope if I didn't. They'd all be following me and coming on here. And they'd say nothing except just to copy other people. And if you see their um, pictures that they post on the on and their profile, they're absolutely atrocious. They're absolutely disgusting. So you know if it's a re if it repeats the what the people are saying, it's a it's a bot. They don't care. They just come on and they repeat. You know. So I don't know if you want me to continue on with this periscope or you want me to stop it and, and then I'll come back on when it's done. You let me know what you want me to do, because I can continue on or I can stop it and then come back on um later. Oh, hi, Alexis. I've got it in the oven. You'll have to go back and watch the replay of how I made it. It's in the oven right now. Um, a bot is is a per it's not a real person. It's somebody that had made it. It's like a robot. Um, <clears throat> okay, it's a robot, and it doesn't say anything except it copies a lot of people's... Um, <laughs> it, it, cop it copies their comments. Um, um, this has to be in here for a while, Alexis. It has to be in there 55 minutes. But it's going to be very pretty. It's going to be good. Yes, <laughs> you are so right. It would be much better without them. But the problem of it is, they are... That's right, they are real, Alexis. They're a pain in the ass, too. Excuse my language, but they are. They're a pain. They are a pain in the butt. And I know you get a lot of them, too, Alexis. Oh, uh, no. A lot of people, if I go in their periscopes, they're getting them all the time. <laughs> yeah, trolls could be more annoying than bots because all bots do is repeat. I still block them, but trolls, huh, trolls come in to cause trouble. Yeah, they're more annoying than the, than the bots are. That's true. Bots aren't real, the trolls are, unfortunately. I wish the trolls weren't. But unfortunately, they're real, and they cause a lot of problems for everybody. <clears throat> they do for me, anyway. I used to have a, and I don't know if you do, still do anymore, Alexis, but I used to have a, one that was stalking me. I don't think he stalks me anymore because I finally got rid of him. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, good comments. But they always put that smiley face behind. But still, I block them when I see them come on people's periscope. I report them because it's spam. Um, you, Oh, that's right, you do. It's Charles, right? It's Charles. Because he's tried to come on my periscopes already. <sighs> yeah, that's what I figured. I've, I've, I try to, uh, I try to block, yeah, that's what I figured. I, I block him every time I see him. If I go in your periscope, Alexis, and I see him on there, I block him. Because I don't want him coming into mine. He's tried to come into mine several times and, no. I don't know why he does that. 40 different accounts? Good gracious. Oh. <sighs> he won't give up. It doesn't seem like he... I don't know what his agenda is anyway. What is his problem? And to make 40 accounts like that? I mean, I know. I've, I've seen him on your scopes before. He can be darn annoying. My goodness. He comes in once and then you see another one. You know it's him. And I've gone into Twitter and I blocked him before. Because I think he's directly from Twitter. He's not on Periscope itself. He's from Twitter. So I've gone in there and blocked him. Because the one I had was from Twitter. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I thought. I did have to block him on Twitter, right. 
because they they come into Periscope from Twitter. They don't have a Periscope account, so they use Twitter to come in here. Uh, I know. Isn't that? It's crazy. I have one account. The accounts you see when you come in here, that's the only account I have. I mean, I couldn't handle 40 or 50 accounts. I mean, it's hard enough to take care of the one I've got without having a whole bunch more. You know, it's just one account is all I need. You know, um, yeah, I know. Satan is, <laughs> yeah, he's causing all the problems in the world. He certainly is. But, you know, it is what it is. But for every bot I see, I block them. And I block them on, on I block them uh, on my end, too, because, like I said, I go back to see who's been watching my replays. Most of the time, I go back to see who's been watching my replays. It's a stupid old bot trying to follow me. Well, I know it's a bot because they don't have a name that you can even pronounce. It's unfamiliar, and you look at their pick, and it's atrocious. So I just go in there, and I just block that bot. They can't follow me everywhere I go. And I have blocked so doggone many of them. You know, most of the people I've got, well, over 2,000 blocked, and I've put over half of them are bots. Half of them are bots are trolls. That's pretty doggone bad. You know, that's, that's pretty bad to have that many to be blocking. But you have to get control of them, you know. Oh, really? That is amazing, Alexis. That's great to hear. I'm glad. I wondered about that. That's right. You can make your own. I'm going to have to do that, you know, make my own. Uh, oh, you did add two bay leaves? Okay. Yeah, I have a thing of bay leaves, too. But the thing with that is you got to remember uh, when it's finished to remove the bay leaves. <laughs> you can't keep them in there. I guess they're there for flavor, but you got to remove them otherwise and take them out. Um, yeah, you do. And I hope, I hope if I, if I, if I um, see you, because I don't always see your um, Facebook Live when you're on there. I sometimes catch them at the last and then I'll say replay. So, oh, there's another bot. Well, they, they, <laughs> they copied you, Alexis. I should have seen that coming. <laughs> but a bot going live, yeah, right. Oh, they need to be strained. Now, how much does it make, Alexis? Do you know how much stock it really makes? Um, will you be able to freeze it? Or what, do you, what will you be able to do with it? Are you going to put it in soup? Oh, I bet it is. You're going to use it for soup? Because that's most of the time that's what I would do. I have got a lot of ve um, organic vegetable broth that I use for soup. Oh, two quarts? Okay. Now, my, I make my own tomato soup um, for, in the Vitamix. Cause I've got a recipe for it and in, in lieu of water when it calls for water I'll use vegetable broth it tastes so much better it's creamier that way and of course the one that I make the most <clears throat> has got cashews in them which really makes it creamy but I like making my own um, <coughs> tomato soup I make my broccoli cheese soup with with the cheese sauce I made which is a real good broccoli cheese soup because that's another thing early Erlina told me about that broccoli cheese soup where you use your cheese sauce. Put that in there. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, well, thank you for telling me, Alexa. See, you know something? I learned something by you guys coming in here, too, because you help me, too. Um, we learn from each other. That's what it's all about. Learning from each other because you have tricks that others may not know anything about. And we listen and we do your tricks, you know, you know. And that's about, hi, good to see you. Welcome. Thank you for coming in and sharing this out. That's why I do these because I like sharing with other people. Other people can make what I make. Even you can make this, uh, Alexis. It may be vegan, but it doesn't, there isn't anything in it's going to harm you. You can make it yourself. You know, with um, because I'll tell you what it has in it, Alexis, if I can find my paper. Here it is. It's three cups of all-purpose flour, a half a cup of uh, cane sugar, and then I use a half a cup of coconut palm sugar, um, because a cup is enough. So I use that. Two teaspoons of non-alcoholic, uh, non non-aluminum baking soda. Um, one teaspoon of sea salt. One teaspoon of coriander. Um. One half teaspoon of ground ginger, 
and a half a teaspoon of um, pumpkin's pie spice, a cup of water, two-third cup of oil, and a can of pumpkin puree, and two, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and a half a cup of carob chips, which are optional. And then you just pour it into your bunt pan. I mixed it with my, my hand mixer, and that's all this. So you can make it yourself. I'm going to post this up there, because I think Erlina posted it before in, in your group, if I'm not mistaken, Alexis. If she, if she didn't, I will. Um, oh, yeah, you can. But uh, like I said, I, I'm not going to post it in my group because Erlene already did, and so it's still up there now. I'll post this on my regular page, though. But I may post it in your group if she hasn't posted it in there, and maybe on Leslie's. But I know it's going to be... Um, oh, she did? That's what I figured she did. So I won't have to then. It really looks good. Tomorrow I'm going to take um, whipped cream because I have to have the coconut milk in the refrigerator overnight, and I've got it in there now. I'm going to make the whipped cream with the whipped cream maker, and I'm going to put the whipped cream on it. It'll be so good because we have a, a church meal tomorrow, fellowship meal after church, and that's what I'm making this for. So I know it'll be really good. It ought to go down good, I hope. I plan on making this for Thanksgiving, too, because my daughter-in-law, she makes a lot of pies but no cakes. So this will be something that everybody might like, I hope. You know, I've used my last can of pumpkin puree. I'm going to have to buy some more. But it's real, real easy to, to get, you know. They keep it throughout the year. In fact, I think the Walmart's going to start stocking more up now than they have. They'll in the in the middle aisles, they always put their pumpkin pie stuff out, you know. So they'll start getting that stuff out. Pumpkin pie filling and pumpkin puree. That's what I tell people. Make sure it's pumpkin puree and not the pumpkin pie filling. Because you can make that mistake. Uh, okay. I will. I will do that. I'll do that. I'll do that tomorrow, um, Alexis. I'll do that tomorrow because I, I've got to. Uh, like I said, I've got to do it tomorrow because I got to get my um, whip. I've got to get it um, set up because it's got. It's got to separate the the cream from the liquid. Hopefully this time there won't be any liquid in it because you really can't have liquid in it for it to work right. Because the last time I think I tried it, just a little bit of liquid in it just didn't want to whip up. But I think it should do it this time. Uh, I don't I don't think it's all that long. Um, maybe 30 seconds at the most, Alexis, if even that. Shouldn't have to. Um, it all depends. Like I said, the last time I tried it and I did it, periscoped it, I ended up having a little bit of liquid in it because it didn't get all drained out. I didn't dump it all out like I should have, separated it out right, and there was still a little bit of liquid there. If you got any liquid in it at all, it won't do it. It didn't whip it up. So I'm going to have to make sure that I get all the liquid completely out of it. Strain it really, really good. Make sure. That's what I'm going to do. But I'm, I'm sure I'm going to use that uh, whipped cream maker. I'm sure I'll um, use a, a dry flavor. What do you mean, uh, Alexis? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean by dry flavor. Because I... Um, oh, like cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice... Oh, for the pumpkin, yeah, that would be good. You know, in you mean in lieu of the, uh, I'll put that in there with the vanilla. You mean because that would, that would be okay. I think that would be good. Put that in the and and vanilla in it versus vanilla. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right because you put a little bit of sugar. I think you put a little bit of sugar in it anyway. Um, don't you add a little bit of sugar to it? And uh, if you do, how much? Because I can't. I know I've got the recipe. I have to go look at it and see how much. But I think you add just a little bit of sugar to kind of sweeten it up a little bit. But you, you know, that makes sense. Maybe it's the vanilla that might keep it from uh, setting, uh, whipping up. I never thought about that because I may have all the liquid from the from the uh, coconut milk out of it. But if you put the vanilla in there, it's going to make it wet again. Yeah. I think you're right, Alexis. It does. It does screw it up. And yet they say to put a vanilla in it. But uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that and see. Yeah, I, I know. I'm got, I've got the recipe somewhere. I'll have to look at it tomorrow for the vegan cool uh, uh, whipped cream. And I'm gonna make that and use the whipped cream maker. As I love that whipped cream maker. Makes fast work of it, I'll tell you. Versus using my beater, you know, because I beat and beat and beat and beat and beat probably eight ten minutes to get it to whip up. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if I have any vanilla beans. I think they're all gone. I used it for my vanilla extract that I made a while back, so I don't have any vanilla beans anymore. 
So, but I got some pumpkin pie spice. I think that might be good because uh, since this is a pumpkin cake, uh, pumpkin pumpkin whipped cream, I've never had that. But you know, that might be good. That's That sounds good. I never thought, and thank you, Alexis, for giving me that idea because that sounds, um, that sounds so good. As I mean, it goes together, you know, <clears throat> and I want to come out good since it's going to be served for the church fellowship meal. You don't want to look dorky or anything like that. And I know it being in the bunk pan, like I bought the bunk pan the other day, and, I, and that's the first bunk pan I've had for a while, and I haven't made anything in bunk pans. <clears throat> uh, I bet it is. I've never had different flavors of Cool Whip, but I know, or whipped cream, I know you can make different flavors. You can probably make strawberry, you can make the vanilla, of course, the vanilla would, would, you know, but you can use your different extracts, but the, like you said, it's the liquids that mess it all up. It will not, you just won't, it just won't beat up, because I had that before. So I don't want to put the vanilla in there and screw it up. Maybe it starts getting peaks in it, you put the vanilla in there, then it falls flat. I don't want to do that. I don't want it falling flat. I want to to uh, whip up, and I know with the whipped cream maple, it'll do just that. And I keep the I keep it in the box, as you can see. I put this back right here. It is. It's in the box. <clears throat> French toast. I don't think I've ever tried that one either. French toast seasoning. Wow. I'll have to try that. I've never had French toast seasoning. I love French toast. That sounds so good. Yeah really does. I'm going to try the, the pumpkin spice. I probably wouldn't use very much. Maybe half a teaspoon or something. Probably not very much. But um, I wonder if it, is it going to change the color of it? Is it going to change it to brown and leave it and not and it won't be white anymore? That's what I'm concerned. <clears throat> if is it going to <clears throat> is the pumpkin spice going to change the color of it? Um, yeah, Alexi Poo's here. She's, oh, okay, good, Alexis. Good. Because I would be afraid it would turn a brown. Instead of stay, staying white. Yep, Alexi Poo is here. She sure is. Um, are you still getting um, still getting a lot of people on your periscopes? You're getting mega, uh, mega people now? Because I knew you'd be getting 100, 200,000 in your scopes, Alexis. And I don't know how you do it, but you're getting them. It must be that Russian guy that must be bringing everybody in. <laughs> where is he getting them from? Oh, <clears throat> and where is he getting them from? I'm lucky if I get two, 300, you know. Well, you know, I'm thankful for what I do get. Whoa, 500 plus, 500,000 plus. Wow, you know, you really should be featured at that time, but you're not, unfortunately. <laughs> you probably, um, he has 2 million followers. No wonder you get that many on. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Boy, if I, I take, if I got that many, if I had that many people in my Periscope, I'd pass out for sure. I really would. I don't know what I've got in mind. I haven't checked because I, I don't check during my Periscope. I don't why I wait until I'm done. But, you know, I, 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 oh, there's a bot. Oh, yeah, you do. You promote, promote food scopes. You sure do. Yep, you sure do. Yep, you sure do. Yeah, she sure is. She's been getting so many people in her Periscopes. But, but I'm getting a few more followers in my Periscopes than I was. So I'm thankful for that, that I'm getting people in my periscopes that I've never had before. And I don't think I've had um, Heather in here, Lulu Heather. And if I haven't, welcome, Heather, because I know you're in Alexis's scopes. When I go in there, I'm, I see you in there. Um, yeah, I've got it in the oven right now. Um, I'll, I'll let you see it when it comes out. Oh, that's what I thought, because I know you're in Alexis's scopes, because I see you in there when, I, when, when she comes on when I'm, when I'm up, you know. So, wow, you've been trending and gaining. Oh, there's Erlene. Wow, you'll have to watch the replay. The, the replay, Erlene, has been in the oven. I've been, I've been standing here chatting with everybody. Good to see you, sis. Welcome. I was wondering if you were going to get to come in. It looks pretty good. It has, I haven't got it out of the oven yet. But, uh, um, oh, you, got, you, just, yeah, you just got home. That's what I figured. Well, I've been on a little while, and I wanted, to, I wanted to chat with you while I was waiting for it to get done in the oven. And I only used a half a cup of cane sugar and a half a cup of coconut palm sugar. I figured that was plenty of sugar. Um, oh, is it cold and raining? Sunshine here in the 70s. You know, I can't figure out this weather. We're real cold in the mornings, about 40 degrees. 
it warms up warms up to about 75 in the afternoon and I can't figure it out I have my furnace on all night a little bit in the morning turn it off then back at night again because it gets so dark out and picking cold uh, probably a year and a half maybe well almost a year and a half um, 90 degrees wow Alexis you're having you're having a Indian summer for sure 44 yeah you it you could tell the falls here because you're starting to cool down I mean that's what we were this morning when I was walking the dogs this morning it was 40 degrees so I had my coat on my hat on my my hood and I wanted to keep warm but now it's about 73 degrees we're gonna be 75 tomorrow oh 60 in Philadelphia Oh, wow. Gonna be about 75 tomorrow, and um, it's gonna be 76 the next day. We're gonna get up about 78. It's the highest we're gonna get this month. Then we're going back down in the 60s. I guess we're having Indian summer because I don't ever remember October being this warm. You know, and Alexis getting 90 degrees. Wow. I don't think you're gonna have much of a winter then, Alexis, <laughs> because uh, you got such hot weather right now. Me, I'm in Oregon. I'm in Eugene, Oregon. Um, hey, do you have an extra bedroom? <laughs> That's pretty cute. I don't like it, 90 and 95 degrees. You know why? At my age, that's hard on me. I don't like it real hot. I don't like it real cold. I kind of like it in what, what it is now. It's nice and comfortable. Um, you're going to get in the 80s tomorrow. <clears throat> Hi, good to see you. Welcome. <clears throat> Somebody's telling Alexis, oh, let me get some water. I would, I'd rather stay 65, 70 all year round. That's ideal temperatures. I don't care for it, 85, 90 degrees. That's a little too hot, but, you know, it is what it is. But I hate to think about the winter coming. What's the winter going to do? Is it going to be cold and snowy? We've been known to have... Oh, have it be nice in the winter, then all of a sudden it turns real cold. It has to bake about 55 minutes, and I don't know how long it's been in there. I've, I've got the timer on the on the stove, so, um, yes, our, mine are turning colors too, and there are, there's, the leaves are dropping fast. All it's going to do here to make them, um, oh, you check it, um, all you have to do is, is take it, um, look out at my... Uh, here and look at the leaves falling off the trees and all it has to do is pour down rain and the wind blow like crazy and the leaves all fall off all at once i had last year did that in the fall it got rainy and the wind blew so hard that my tree was full of leaves well by the end of the day they were off it blew them all off the tree so then my neighbor comes over and she rakes them for me which is a good thing so too so but uh, i i you know, I don't like raking leaves, but, you know, I don't mind this time of year. I love it because of the of the pretty fall colors. You can see all the trees with all the uh, leaves, you know, different color leaves. I don't care for winter. The only thing about winter that I like is when the snow first falls. If I don't have to drive in it, I'm fine with it. But when it first falls, it looks like a picture postcard, a, a Christmas postcard you send out to your friend, fans, friends and family for the holidays. That's what it looks like when it first falls. Now, last year I periscoped when, when we got a snowstorm, and I'll probably do it again this year if we get it. Oh, you've been, oh yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I haven't started raking yet. I've got a, I've got a blower too, um, a leaf blower. And most of the time I just take the a leaf blower and just blow them all up in the um, pile. And hopefully they'll blow out and blow them out into the curb, you know, because they come around sometime, I think, in January, middle of January. Why they wait so long, I don't know. But they'll come around then and pick all the leaves up into a dump truck and haul them away. I don't know where they haul them to, but uh, leaves are starting to fall now, but they're just not falling fast enough. There was a branch of my tree that broke off, and I don't know what made it broke off, if the wind broke it off or what, but somebody had moved it for me, so that's a good thing. So those leaves I won't have to worry about, but this this year is, a, is pretty. Right now, it's pleasant. But when it gets 90, 95 degrees, I hate it. I hate it with a passion. I don't like it. You know, 90. you can keep your 90 degree weather, Alexis. That's just a little bit too hot. I like it the way this is because I can 
I can sit in my house, don't have to have my heat on. And it's nice, you know. Don't have to run my air conditioner, which I can't run it anyway because I put it away. Um, yeah, too much heat is not good. I can't stand a lot of cold, and I certainly can't take a lot of heat. I put my air conditioner away last week, so if it gets real, real hot, I'll just have to stick my fan there in front of me and just use that because I've got some fans that I can, I've can i got out yet, and I can use those. But the air conditioner I put away because I figured I'm not going to need it anymore. Then when I say I'm not going to need it anymore, then it ends up getting 75 and 80 degrees. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Go figure. Because I looked on the weather report and it didn't show that it was going to get real hot. I thought, oh, it's in the 60s. I don't need it. Um, but then it ends up being being where it's going to it's going to be a hot one anyway. Wow, these bots are something. Well, at least it was a good comment. <laughs> these bots can be so darn annoying, you know. But anyway. I know this pumpkin cake's gonna be good because we're, like I said, we're having a fellowship meal tomorrow, and I wanted to take something for the fellowship meal, and I am gonna make the whipped cream in the mor in the morning and try to. Hopefully, it'll come out good, and uh, I'll put the pumpkin pie spice in, like you said, Alexis, instead of the vanilla, and not put liquid in it. So maybe it will whip up because I'm get uh, a little embarrassed when I try to whip something up and it ends up not whipping up. <laughs> it just doesn't want to whip up at all, and. Uh, but I'll take a video. I'll take just a video of it. I won't take Facebook Live or anything. I'll just take a video of it, and then I'll I'll just post it in my group that I that I did a, a just a just a regular video, you know, and uh, so because you can you can do that. Just do a regular phone video and put post it in there, and that's what I'll do. So uh, hopefully it, it'll come out good, you know, and uh, post it up on your group maybe, and post it up on on mine and. And I know it'll look good. And I did put the carob chips in mine. Did you put the carob chip, chip, chips in your, in yours, Erlene? Because I put them in mine. Um, hi, Tanisha. Good to see you. Welcome. Um, okay, you'll have to, uh, you'll have to uh, watch the replay on how I made the, uh, how I made the cake, Tanisha, because it's in the oven. I'm waiting for it to come out because I was going to periscope, be on here until it comes out, and then, um, oh, if it's oh, it's something, yeah. It was, yeah, I, yeah, something different, all right, yeah. Hi, good to see you, welcome, and thank you for coming on. My cake is in the oven right now. I'm, I'm waiting for it to get done. So and as soon as it gets done, I'll pull it out, and I'll let you see what it, what it looks like. Um, and I can tell you what it has in it. It's got three cups of all-purpose flour, a half a cup of cane sugar, and I put a half a cup of uh, coconut sugar in it, um, two teaspoons of non-aluminum baking soda, which I have right here. It says aluminum free on it. As you can see that, read it. It's aluminum free. Um, one t uh, teaspoon of sea salt, one teaspoon of coriander, two teaspoons of ground ginger, a half a teaspoon of uh, pumpkin pie spice, a cup of water, two thirds cup of oil, one can of organic pumpkin puree, and a half a cup of carob chips, which are optional. That's what it has in it. And I know Alexa said she can make that. It's simple. It's a very nice recipe. It doesn't take very long to make it. And I know it's going to look nice. It's going to, I mean, I like the color of it. But did you tell me I should test it, um, Erlene, to see if it's, if it's got any, uh, if, it, if, it, if it comes out clean on the... I just, I, I did. I just put it in a bowl and just mixed it all with my, with my hand mixer is all I did. Test it to see if it, if it comes out clean. Okay. Cause I don't know how long it's been in there. I have to get a, uh, I'll have to get a, a uh, okay, I'll, I'll have to get a, get a, uh, a hot pad too to test it. Pull it out. Just a minute. Test it real quick. Oh, let me test it real quick. Well, it does look good. Let me test it real quick. Pull it out here. Yeah, looks pretty clean to me. It doesn't. There's not much on it. If there's anything on it at all, I couldn't see it. So it looks like it's done. So I'm gonna pull this out. All right. There we go. All right, there we go. And I'll pull this back. And I'll turn my oven off. There we go. 
Now I'll pull this, I'll pull it down so you can see it. There you go. So you can see what it looks like. Doesn't that look good? Look at that. Look at that. And you can see the carob chips are in it. Doesn't it? It does look good, doesn't it? I look and it's cracked on top, so I think it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it looks good too. It is it's cracked on top, so that must mean it's done. Oh, it does it does it too? It really does. I'm gonna leave it in this bunk pan for a while and let it um, cool down before I dump it and put it on a plate. Okay, Erlene, that's what I thought. How long should I have to let it cool? Quite a while. Oh, it does. It does. It smells. It smells really good. It really does. It smells really good. I like the looks of it. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Put it back up. There we go. Doesn't that look good? And the butt pans you can get those everywhere. You know, um, you can see there's. You can see the the uh, carob chips on top there. You know, they're all mixed up and come up on the top. That is going to be a one tasty old, old cake for tomorrow. <laughs> Grandma Karen, you're right. There's my, there is my my cake. Doesn't it look good? I think it looks really good. I was impressed when I saw Erlene's cake. Um. Ah, oh, me too, me too. Run a knife around the outside and around the hole so it will come out. Oh, okay, okay, Erlene. Thanks for telling me. I got to be careful. You mean after it cools? I'll, I'll do that. I did I did a grease and flour, though. I used coconut oil and then I put flour in it. But I do want to make sure it comes out. Okay, I'll do that. But I think this looks so good, you know. Um, uh, see, and it's simple to make your own. I, it's just as, um, it's, this has got a little bit more ingredients than what most recipes have. Um, I like the recipe, Erlena. What I did this morning is I went on Facebook. I took it off my my vegan page because I didn't have the recipe, so I just copied it down on this little paper here so I could make it today. I'll have to put it on something else, but I copied it so I would have it. And then I'm just going to post it. I won't post it in my vegan page since it's already there. And you're, you post it on Alexis, so I'll post it there. But my normal page I'll post it on. Um, oh, I've never had a pumpkin cake. Uh Oh, you've done that before? Okay. I've never had a pumpkin cake. Pumpkin pie, yes, but I've never had a pumpkin cake. But I like the I like it. It looks so pretty. Look at the way it looks. And I know it's gonna be good and tasty. It really is. I mean, people will really like it at the at the um thing tomorrow. I know they will. Um Whoa! That sounds good. It really does sound good. Wow. Woo! No, this is a pumpkin cake. It's a pumpkin cake, not pumpkin bread. It wouldn't be made in a loaf pan if it was pumpkin bread, but this is a pumpkin cake. And I'm going to, like I said, in the morning, I'm going to um, use my whipped cream maker and I'm going to make the whipped cream. I've got the coconut milk in the refrigerator right now, the, full, the fat kind of got in the refrigerator right now, right now so it can set up and I can separate the water from the cream. And then Alexis wants me to do a demo so I can... Uh, Post it in the group, which I intend to do tomorrow. I'll post. I'll make a demo of it, and I'll, and I'll post it in there. Welcome to those coming in. Um, this is my uh, pumpkin cake that I just made. Um, good, good. I'm glad it did. You know, I like pumpkin. You know something? I don't really think that you have to wait until fall to have pumpkin. It can you can eat it really all year round. You know, I've had pumpkin pumpkin cookies and that stuff like that. But this being October and it's getting, um, hi, good to see you, welcome. Um, oh, yeah, it is. I just, I don't know what which one I've got now, but I bought it at Walmart. It's Thai, it's, it's a Thai brand. I just buy it at Walmart. I know it's a dollar or something with the can, I think. And it's not real expensive. And, and I had a couple, I had one light one and one, the full fat, so I just have to pick the full fat and put it in the refrigerator overnight, so your so your fat separates from the water, and then you got it made. And then I'll put pumpkin spice pie, pie spice in it instead of vanilla, and a little bit of uh, sugar probably. Put it in the whipped cream maker. I'll do a demo of it, and we'll see how it's going to come out. 
hope it'll come out good. I really do. <laughs> I'm, you know, can only try and see. So, but here I want you to see what it looks like. And you can see that it looks really good. Um, it came out good. And this Bundt cake pan, I love this Bundt cake pan. Um, yeah, just, just whip up a cold can. Just whip up, be ready, just take a cold can of coconut milk. You've got the light and you've got the full fat. If it doesn't say light on it, it's the full fat. You have to put it in the refrigerator. It must set up overnight. Because if you don't let it set up overnight, you can't, it won't separate the liquid from the cream. You want, that's the whole idea, to separate, separate it out so that you have nothing but the cream left, and that's what you whip it up with, is the cream. Um, oh, you use full fat and you're skinny? Well, that's, that. yeah, well, you, that's what you're supposed to use, is the full fat. Uh, oh, thank you, doesn't it, though? It's, it's very simple to make. You'll have to go back. If you didn't, if you didn't watch the uh, uh, replay of how I made it, you'll have to uh, see, or you weren't in here when I made it, you can go in and watch the replay as to how I made it. I went step by step of how I made it, everything I used for it, and poured it in a pan. Well, hi, Richard. Good to see you. Here is my pumpkin cake. You'll have to go back and watch the replay, Richard, as to how I made it. But there's my pumpkin cake. Tomorrow, I'm going to put whipped cream on it, and I'm going to take it to the fellowship meal at church. It really, and believe me, I love the smell of this pumpkin. It's wafting in front of me. Makes me want to eat the whole thing. Or maybe, well, makes me want to eat some of it, but I'm not going to cut into it. <laughs> Leave it in a ring form. Okay, all right, Erlene, I'll tell them. Okay. Um, you know, I never, I never cut my cakes or pies when I, when I take them anyway. They usually cut them there in the kitchen when they, when they, to serve them, they'll cut them up. So I never really cut it. So I'll just take it the way it is and put it in my container because I've got a, a cake container that I carry my cakes in, and I'll just take it in there. Um, yeah. I never, I never did. I always, always left my pies whole or anything. I made any desserts and they would cut them up, up there. You know, we never cut them ahead of time. So, but I think this looks so good. And I'll tell those that just came in, I'll tell you what I have in it. Three cups of all purpose flour. And I put a half a cup of cane sugar in it, organic cane sugar, plus a half a cup of um, organic coconut sugar, coconut palm sugar. Because a cup of sugar is enough. Now, Erlene on her recipe had said a cup of, of both, but that's a little bit much. So I just used a half a cup of each, so a cup is enough. Two teaspoons of non-aluminum baking soda. One teaspoon of sea salt. One teaspoon of coriander. One half teaspoon of ground ginger. Half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. One cup of water. Two-thirds cup of oil. One can of organic pumpkin puree. Two, te two teaspoons of lemon juice and one half a cup of carob chips. And that's all that it takes. And it's, it's as simple as that. And it was simple to make and I, and I really going to like it. I know it's gonna be, it's gonna be delicious. So as you can see what it looks like, it looks real good. And um, I'm going to go now as I think I've got a few dishes to wash, but I wanna go, but, but I thank you all for coming in and I'm gonna let this cool down before I take it out. But, um, cause I want to, I want to relax before Sabbath gets here, but I thank you all for coming in and sharing this out. And those that are, uh, that Sabbath is coming on, I hope you have a blessed and, and wonderful Sabbath and uh, listen for the, for the notification tomorrow. I'll be doing another Periscope in church as usual. So listen for that. And, uh, and, but in the meantime, till we meet again, God bless, take care and bye-bye.